So I noticed that uh, all of the presentations um, that you have made uh, are mainly on education, community development education, uh, adaptive physical education. So what I'm going to share with you is something different. Um, I'm going to, to talk about community development in Hong Kong under the um, COVID-19. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm very much mindful of time, so I will be quick <laughs> in, in, my, in, my, in my talk. Um, so Hong Kong was one of the first cities in which um, COVID-19 emerged, with the virus beginning to spread in late January 2020. And before it's imagined, Hong Kong had, was beset by social protests associated with the anti-extradition -extra, law amendment bill movement, um, which has um, made Hong Kong very famous uh, for a long period of time from um, mid uh, 2019. So the arrival of COVID-19 represented a blow to the city. Uh, what I would like to highlight in my presentation this evening is that um, in Hong Kong, uh, professional social workers made the presence felt when they deliver a variety of services at the height of the pandemic. But community workers um, who are working in um, CD projects and those um, social workers who had adopted community work approaches have became the major service providers when the availability and accessibility of other types of social services has been seriously impaired. So this presentation focuses on community work in um, Hong Kong under COVID-19. Um, so this is the, um, um, the history. Uh, so after the first two cases were confirmed on 23rd January, 2020, Hong Kong actually has experienced four waves now uh, is four waves of the pandemic, uh, punctuated by intermittent one and two months uh, recessions in cases. Uh, and by now, um, the fourth wave was just officially announced as terminated. So we're, we're quite great um, in, in recent days, uh, but still the social distancing measures um, are still with us. Um, so as in many other places, the effects of the pandemic are not evenly distributed across different groups of the Hong Kong population. The degree of vulnerability, risk and suffering is disproportionately higher among disadvantaged groups in the city. The pandemic is thereby amplifying long-standing structural issues of poverty and inequality in such areas as employment, education, uh, housing conditions particularly experienced by different social groups differentiated by age, gender, ethnicity, migrant status, and other factors. Um, in Hong Kong, actually, um, community workers um, have been working very hard um, during the pandemic to provide support to the vulnerable um, populations. So um, Kiki and I has, have conducted a, a study, a qualitative study in late 2020 to examine, um, to examine the, um, the work, the strategies of community workers, uh, how they are responding to the needs under uh, COVID-19 and the use of uh, ICT, because during that period of time when uh, everyone is locked down, uh, we need to communicate through using ICT. And uh, we, we would also like to share a little bit about the implications of the findings uh, for community development. So uh, in total, we have uh, interviewed 19 social workers working with 12 community development projects. So what were commonly shared by the um, community workers we interviewed about the differences between um, the impact of uh, the pandemic on uh, groups of the population was that um, the vulnerable and disadvantaged population uh, has less resources to support themselves to adapt to new challenges. For example, it was very difficult to purchase face masks and disinfection supplies, uh, particularly during the beginning of the, um, of the pandemic. And uh, vulnerable families' basic rights to education, healthcare, and access to technology and communications are very much constrained. And particularly um, some vulnerable groups, they are disproportionately affected 
uh, particularly those uh, residing in speed. Uh, we, we, we call them uh, subdivided units, which are very tiny cubicles uh, for living um, in, in, in Hong Kong. So um, the residents in um, subdivided units, single mothers, migrants in mainland China, low income neighbors, and those living on welfare and uh, older adults are those who are um, um, particularly affected. So a broad range of difficulties were identified of a tangible psychological and social nature and at the individual family and community levels. Residents living in subdivided units have been hit hardest by the um, pandemic. But because of time compression, I'm not going to talk about the, in detail um, the difficulties they have experienced. Um, in short, um, the difficulties are related to the um, very tiny li living space, um, the physical building structures, and also uh, the lack of um, 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 uh, internet connections uh, in those uh, buildings. So the lack of modern computing devices, uh, lack of internet connections are all those um, uh, problems experienced by the low income communities. So there are impact on the major caregivers, the mothers and those working part times and, and the stress and anxiety in the households actually is gendered uh, with mothers and caregivers. Most of them are women experiencing the greatest pressure Um, community workers in Hong Kong do not consider supporting the community during COVID-19 as beyond their service mandate, although they are, this is the first time most of them uh, have experienced. Um, under government regulations, um, actually most of the social services um, stopped the services, um, except with urgent, um, urgent cases, dealing with urgent cases. Uh, but community workers actively planned and implemented intervention during the immediate relief stage and the recovery stage of the pandemic. So the uh, community workers shared um, in, uh, in our interviews that the difference uh, between community development and other types of social services was that community workers shared a philo shared philosophy of community development as a practice promoting human rights and empowering the community. Um, as revealed in the uh, qualitative interviews, um, community workers adopted both top-down and bottom-up intervention strategies, particularly during the emergency relief stage. For top-down intervention strategies, they included um, um, like delivering um, um, <clears throat> PEP, distributing food, and later distributing SIM cards and lending mobile phones and tablets, computers and just to, to, to the low income families. Um, in the process, community workers um, actively uh, have been actively, actively playing the roles of blocker, coordinating relief efforts and resources from different sources. So many of those tangible goods were donated by business enterprise, family foundations, small shops, and et cetera. And community workers were trying to um, coordinate those donations and um, distribute them to the, those needy. Um, immediate relief work also involved the improvement of the sanitation and safety of living environments. So there were uh, interdisciplinary uh, cooperation uh, with the uh, support of medical workers, uh, architects uh, who are involved in uh, repairing drains and sterilizing um, threats, etc. So, um, in addition to top down approach, bottom up intervention strategies uh, were adopted as well. So, this is core to community development. Um, the strategies included facilitating participation of the residents, empowering them, identifying their strengths and developing capacity and building a sense of um, mastery. Some of the examples, are, um, um, oh, I, I, I think I have to speak up and so I'll skip all these. <laughs> so um, to conclude, maybe I, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, COVID-19 is an opportunity to make community development service visible to the community and confirm its unique role of dealing with hazardous um, situations faced by individuals, families, and the community. 
And social justice is particularly evident in relation to in the use of information um, te uh, ICT. And so social workers have also paid attention to uh, this aspect. And uh, there were additional work um, to prepare the service users to uh, participate online. So, um, okay. So um, in short, the pand pandemic has demonstrated the significance of community work and raised awareness among residents of the importance of social capital. Uh, the sense of community is strengthened by the presence of common concerns and languages among residents, and um, they've got more time for communication. And community work plans for long-term social development that are essential to establishing the social, economic, and political infrastructure to deal with the ongoing uncertainties in society. Um, and this is this role is uh, recognized, uh, fully recognized by community workers. So maybe I stop here and um, let's see if there is um, any questions or uh, comments or discussion.